Welcome to Chola Farm. Today we are going step by step on how to properly clean and set up our 1056 egg capacity incubator for a successful hatch. If you want high hatch rates, maintaining a clean and well set up incubator is key. Let's get started. <laughs> Before starting a new incubation cycle, I always make sure the incubator is thoroughly cleaned. A dirty incubator can lead to contamination, which affects heart rates and the health of the chicks. Now, I had already removed the trays earlier, but I still want to mention why that step is important. Trays and tray holders tend to collect dust. Not only dust, but broken shell pieces and, of course, bacteria from previous hatches. So they must be cleaned properly before reuse. For cleaning, I like to use warm water mixed with hydrogen peroxide, vinegar. I mean, like in this case, I'm using Biosafe, which is also a mild disinfectant. These are effective at killing bacteria without leaving behind any harmful chemicals. I always avoid using strong disinfectants like bleach because they can leave toxic residues that could be dangerous for the chicks. So next, we clean the fan, which is crucial for circulating warm air inside the incubator. A dirty fan can reduce airflow causing uneven temperatures and affecting hatch rates, okay? We then wipe down the entire interior of the incubator, focusing on corners where dirt uh, collects, okay? Again, we use warm water with a natural disinfectant to remove bacteria while keeping the incubator safe for the next batch of eggs. You can clearly see that we also must wipe the control panel to make the buttons working properly, okay? So uh, the windows also must always be clear to monitor the eggs inside. A dirty window makes it hard to check humidity levels and egg turning, all right? Once we finish cleaning, we go over everything one more time with clean water 
to remove any remaining disinfectant, ensuring a fresh, clean incubator. Now that the incubator is clean, we don't rush to place the eggs immediately. I always let the machine air out for about two hours. This helps any remaining moisture or disinfectant fumes to clear, ensuring a fresh, clean environment for the eggs. Once that is done, as you can see, it's time uh, to sort our eggs, all right? Sorting is very important because only strong healthy eggs will give us a good hatch rate. We carefully go through them, setting aside the best ones for incubation and removing any that are cracked or too small. Cracked eggs can introduce bacteria into the incubator, while weak or oddly shaped eggs may not develop properly. Taking time to sort at this stage saves us trouble later on and improves our overall hatch success okay so make sure you take your time to sort properly Our eggs are usually pretty clean, but if we come across any that have a bit of dirt on them, 
we gently wipe them using a soft cloth and warm water. We have to be very careful with this because eggs have a natural protective coating that helps keep bacteria out. Overcleaning can strip away this layer, making the eggs more vulnerable to contamination. So we only clean when necessary and as gently as possible to keep the eggs in the best condition for incubation. Now we carefully place our eggs in the incubator. We always put the white tray inside first before arranging the eggs. This is from experience. It prevents unnecessary movement and breakage, ensuring all eggs remain intact. Otherwise, hey, you might break all the eggs in the process of putting the white trays inside the incubator. <laughs> And as you can clearly see, the eggs must always be placed with the sharp point facing down. All right. This keeps the air sac at the top, which is important for proper cheek development. One great thing about our incubator is that we can always set eggs in batches instead of waiting to fill up the entire machine. This time, we've managed to set about 350 eggs, but we are planning to add more as we go, all right? Also, before switching on the incubator, we always check the water supply. Water is crucial because it helps maintain the right humidity level inside the machine. If there is no water, the eggs can dry out, all right? Making it hard for them to hatch properly. So we make sure the water system is set before starting the machine to create the perfect conditions for incubation, all right? So I realized that there was no enough water in our small water drum, and so we had to fill it up with water, as you can see, so that it can easily be supplied inside the incubator, as you can see, okay? Once that is done, 
we now switch on our incubator. The first thing we check is the temperature and humidity. You will see that it automatically sets itself to 37.8 degrees Celsius to for that is for temperature and 60% for humidity. All right. These are the optimal conditions for incubation. Too much fluctuation can interfere with embryo development. Okay. And to the control panel, the green switch controls the fan. The fan ensures even heat distribution inside the incubator, preventing hot or cold spots, okay? While the red switch is for the internal light, which helps us check the eggs without opening the machine too often. Remember, once we close the machine, we don't need to open it too often. The only time we will open it is when we are putting more eggs, all right? Okay, so uh, we want to go to the, you know, uh, we want to access the F1 to F7 settings, as you can see. So first, we press and hold the upper and lower arrow. See that? Yeah, those are the control panel. We are still in the control panel. You press and hold the upper and lower arrow buttons at the same time for about 30 seconds. This allows us to access the internal settings. All right. Next, we press the lower arrow and the set button. Okay, at the same time. This brings us to the F1 setting. All right, F1 is 90. This is the default turning interval we keep clicking okay to move through the next settings because they are already preset for our incubator okay so we we, we click f2 uh, f3 f4 f5 and uh, f6 till f7 so the f2 controls the temperature alarm f3 controls the humidity alarm f4 adjust how often the eggs turn F5, it sets the fan speed. F6 manages additional safety alarms to prevent overheating. And of course, the final one, F7, prevent, uh, it, it actually confirms all settings before incubation begins, all right? Once everything is confirmed, we press OK to exit. Now our incubator is fully set, okay? And after 90 minutes, we came back to check if the eggs are turning. This is crucial because turning prevents the embryo from sticking to the shell, ensuring healthy cheek development, all right? And of course, the incubation room door should be closed to maintain uh, stable temperatures, okay? Now we wait for 21 days before our chicks start hatching. And hey, don't forget to monitor your water through the window, okay? You keep on monitoring the water. You don't have to open the incubator door, all right? And if you have a problem with power, make sure you have a backup, like for instance, generator or solar, okay? That's it for today. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more farming tips. See you in the next one, okay? Have any questions about incubation? Drop them in the comments below. Ideas for now.